to you. <laughs> this is the Brooks Hyperion Elite. It's the lightest and fastest shoe that Brooks has ever made, and it's the shoe that you'll see towing the line at the U.S. 2020 Olympic Marathon Trials alongside the likes of the Nike Vaporfly Next Percent, the Alpha Fly, and all of the other carbon-plated sort of super shoes that we're seeing coming out in 2020. So I'm here with test editor Amanda Furr, who's been running in this shoe a bit. And what we're gonna do today is we're gonna talk about the specs of the shoe, what it's like to run in, and then we're gonna cut one in half and see what makes this shoe work. In 2018, it was given to Dathan Rittenhein. He ran the New York Half Marathon. He came in second overall. And then, the next month, Des Linden was hand-delivered these shoes four days before the marathon. Shadrach Biwat also was given the shoes, and they were painted black. And some people suspected that that was because these shoes were vapor flies. They were not. They were the prototype of the Hyperion Elite. Compared to, let's say, the vapor flies, how do these shoes feel to run in? Okay, so like um, having experience with the vapor flies, um, they're my go-to racing shoe for about like maybe a year and a half. The Brooks shoes, to me, because I wear Brooks a lot when I'm training, they have that kind of nice, not exactly wide platform, but like accommodating. I noticed when I was first like running in them, I almost like was floating with the Vaporfly. With these, I felt like a monster. They do feel quite firm. So maybe less comfort, but that sort of aggressive, powerful stride that you'd, I guess, you'd want on race day. Really the only issue that I have is because this is a unisex shoe, the ankle is a little wide. Let's fire this baby up. Already we can see that the construction of the midsole and the carbon plate is similar to that of another shoe that we've just done a video on, but there are some differences. Specifically, we're seeing a little bit more foam beneath the plate on this shoe and a little bit less foam above it. Uh, otherwise, the shape of the plate seems to be relatively similar. If we want to put a set of calipers to the midsole itself in order to judge how thick they are, we're using the World Athletic Standard here, and these shoes will show up a little bit thicker than and the advertised measurements because they're both men's size 11 and a half as opposed to the standard size nine. But we can see that the forefoot on the Brooks is approximately 22 millimeters according to our calipers and we're seeing uh, about 33 mils in the heel. So that's 10, 11 mil drop. But compared to the Vaporfly, we've got you know, evidently more foam just by what you can see with your eyes. And then the calipers back that up. We've got about 40 mils in the heel and then we've got see, about 31, 32, call it 32 in the forefoot. So that immediate feeling of touchdown comfort that you feel in this shoe and not that shoe is definitely borne out by the amount of foam. Okay, well, assuming that the 4% is kind of like the next percent, um, that bounciness, I can see with like the way this is layered, it's probably because of the foam composition. With the way it is distributed over here on the Hyperion, when I was running and I was seeing that like my feet just felt like they were under a spell, it was almost like, not exactly that I was leaning forwards, but like as soon as like my foot hit the pavement and then like it'd go up, the other foot would go and just go and go and go. And I think that's because of the way the propulsion plate is just like sandwiched in there and there's barely that much. I mean, this shoe is not an unstiff shoe, but we can still bend it, especially when it's cut in half fairly easily. Whereas if you go to bend this shoe, it requires a bit more energy. That stiffness, I think, kind of helps with the speed. So more stiff, more speed. Also, it, you know, it helps that it's a lightweight shoe as well. So the last interesting thing is to compare the shape and placement of the plates in both shoes. There have been people who have said that Nike has nailed the placement and the shape of the plate and that nobody's going to be able to copy it and that makes this whole uh, shoe battle unfair. These plates look very, very similar. The placement seems very, very similar. And so if Brooks or another company were not allowed to do that from a legal perspective, then we probably wouldn't be looking at this shoe right now. So Amanda, having run three races in these shoes, what's your verdict? So I'm not saying that that 4% guarantee or more taking it off your time is untrue. It probably does. Um, the data backs it up. But also the Vaporfly, the next percent is not for every runner. I run in those shoes, I basically made the skin of my ankles like hamburger meat at the end of my races. Maybe you're a Brooks runner, maybe you're Saucony, maybe you like Nike. The thing is, all these companies are coming out with their own race shoes. So that's the Brooks Hyperion Elite. It is a very lightweight, firm, 
fast shoe for race day only. And it's not the only of its type that we're gonna see in the next coming months. So let us know in the comments which shoe you wanna see us cut up next.